Hello, 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 and welcome to today's episode of Her Version. This podcast is dedicated to sharing stories of struggle to triumph, a platform that allows individuals to tell their truth in order to inspire and uplift others. I am your host, Sabrina Victoria. If you are new to this podcast, make sure you follow, like, subscribe, and share. Let's jump right in. Oh my gosh, I was so excited about that intro. I started coughing on myself. Thank you for joining us today for this episode of Her Version. I have an amazing guest speaker with us, Leah. Leah is a mother with the gift of empathy. She is here today to speak about narcissism, living in fear, and how she pulled herself out of a dark space and into a world of clarity, light, and positive energy. Welcome, Leah. Hi, Hi How are you doing, girl? I can't, I can't see, see the people that come from the like, uh, 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 Of course, of course. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. It just, um, you know, just be cognizant of it and make sure when you're speaking, you speak up just so that we can make sure everyone can hear you okay. So well, how has your week, mom. so um, how, how has your week been? Well, well, it's not um, week, week, but I went to do it with a beautiful holiday. It's also every seven years, we earn to rest. And this year, we are on the seventh year where we need to do something. We can't Plan, plan anything because we, we need better bread. Bread. So we, so we need, need each other other thing. Plan, plan other things. Other things. Um, um, in other in other lands, lands they, they um, um, that will, that will be fertile and they will give you fruits. fruits. And, and for that, that, um, um, we, we think that, that, that need for help, help uh, money, money, or whatever, or whatever else we offer them, offer them our yeah. land. Our land. So they can, so they can keep it space space. So, yeah. so it's an interesting thing. Um, um, last last that was, was a little bit on a, on a low, low kind of like, like mood. mood. And, and it was an interesting process, process, process to see how, how I went from like low, 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 and low, 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 I hear you on that. Hey, um, do you mind clicking on the, um, do you mind clicking on, is there any way that you could get on your phone? On my phone. Yeah, and um, and do this on your phone because I have two people already that are saying they can't hear you. Oh, okay. Let's see, let's see. Um, Not yet. Is it is it on? Let's see if that one's any better. Can you hear me better? Hear me better here? Yes. Okay. A hundred percent better. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Um, so listen, we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. And uh, I'm so excited to have you here with us. Thank you so much for taking some of your time today to sit down and enlighten us on your story and what you've gone through and where you are now. Uh, one of the things that I love to do before we actually jump into all the goodies and where you are mentally and emotionally now is I kind of like to just give our viewers just a, a tidbit as to your earlier years and what kind of person you were growing up. Do you mind giving us a little snippet of that? 
Uh, sure. Uh, sure. I don't mind. I don't mind. Um, um, oh, 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 oh. What? Uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, whatever. So, uh, 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 um, um, I grew, I grew up, in, up in, I come uh, from four corners, four corners half so far, half so far, uh, 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 both, both, one, one was quirky, but, but, but still my mom, my mom grew, grew uh, uh, from, uh, from a basic school and that uh, were so, so what, 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 what being born, being born in, in it's a long it's a long story. Story. um um <laughs> there was, there was school, that school that that I was, I was, was a, a rebel, rebel the eyes, the eyes of the, the, the um, um I always, I always think thing uh, uh, I was, I was like, like hear, hear everything, everything. Thing. Uh, to, uh, the, to point, the point um, um I don't know, I don't how, know you how you it, but in the end, uh, the, 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 the little guy, guy but, but, why? but why? But why? Until one said, you know what? Then you know what? I don't know. I don't have the thought and yeah, yeah. Called, called the like, 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 yeah. yeah. And so, and it's so it to do what? Uh, 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 five. Um, um, there, there, Everything, everything really, really curious, curious about. Um, um, was always, always a computer, computer since, since I was a girl. girl. Um, um, I knew I what, what I loved, loved animal, animal, loved nature, nature, adventure, cook, cook, I loved love music. Um, um, I was the, I was the fourth, fourth girl, girl for my for father, my father. Um, um, where he, where wanted, he wanted, wanted to So, so I, was, I was a um, boy. boy. I became a team. Um, um, I was really, really, really good, good at sports. Art. Art. Uh, uh, I was, I was a creep. Creep. low, low, like, like, you know, like, like this team, maybe. maybe. And, and, I don't, I don't, but I just, just love stories. stories. I, 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 people, any, any. That was, that was really, really, I loved, loved. Um, that was, that was, that was for, for me. me. And I went, and I went up art arts and craft, visual, visual art, art. and, and uh, it was a it was a different other other uh, uh, However, I, 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 can't, I can't I can't be great. Great. I have, I have to whether whether else, else not, not so so enough. Enough. Um, um, I, I left, left my own, my own. Uh, and I and I the now now. You know, you know, like, like a midnight shop, shop, shop will throw, throw away, away furniture, furniture feed and I had to so I had to make, make my, own my own from, from, from the stuff that was all the way. way. And I saw the other was being the top of, top my, of my head. Um, um, <laughs> and, um <laughs> wrong, wrong the, the way, way I mean, so, so far, far. Six, 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 um, um I started, I started my. Oh, well, well, it wasn't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we are we are going far farther farther here. Here, but this is that was that was it. Uh, like uh, like one month. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Where do you stay now? Where are you living now? I, I my, my Peru. Peru. You're in Peru. But I am right. Miami. Miami. Okay. okay. Got it. So where are you right now, though? Are you in Miami or are you in Peru? I'm in Miami. You're in Miami? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I knew you lived close, but I didn't know if you were here at the moment. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. A, that's awesome. At some point. At some point. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I agree with you. So um, you've brought us all the way up until 21-ish. Basically. 21-ish. Um so leading up into your adult years and um you know relationships and all that good stuff what were some of the low points that you hit i think, I think it's my first my first was at was the third, third and, and i i, 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 I was with, with well first, first my, my, 
is is a older than my mom. My mom. And uh, the most beautiful, most beautiful she was she was through or, or at some point. At some point. And, and uh, I think I she think was she was yes the example at home at home it was, it was you know you know the wise wise example. And so and I so I was young, young and I had like like I I like what is what is not good for at that age. at that age. To go, go, and so, and so, my, my structure relationship relationships pretty, young. pretty. Yeah, I had, I had no dignity, dignity, self, self, for age. So, so I, I point, I point, felt, I felt that was that it. was it. Was, was, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, and and by the by age, the age one, one, I. Very, very messed up, messed up in, in terms, terms of verbs. It was more. It was more I want. I want to prove that, prove I, that I, I break, break the curse, curse or add, add the, the gold. gold. Um, um, it was the, it was most, the most at, at, and, and I, I same place. place. I guess, I guess you, were, you were. I didn't. I didn't just better, better than that. that. So I thought mm-hmm. that, that I was. I was more, more in a power in a power for them then. Mm-hmm. and and uh, I like, I like I control, um, um the outcome yeah but I mean I mean I mean it led it led to, led to um, um self destruct yeah that yeah, totally yeah. makes sense a hundred percent great I mean that's all else, else I did, I did. um, um Cool. Won an award. Won an award. Here, here. Um, um, and he was, he was quite, quite aggressive to do with, with wise, wise and mind. When he came, when he came to an emotion, um, um, I was, I was at a loss. No, yeah. no idea. Yeah. 100%. Um, so through all of this, I'm assuming at some point you learned about empathy yeah yeah narcissism <laughs> but, 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 I, 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 I want i want can i can use, i use for one, for minute? one minute yeah i i talk about, about something, something that, that, that uh, uh, i see, I see a, my my my, uh, my consultation, consultation when, I when i speak, speak or when, when i um um as to as do, do a phrase, a phrase, a common, a common phrase. phrase you heard. Somebody took was bringing the worst out of me, and I want to make sure that um, I'm not invalidating nor my feelings, nor my emotions, nor anybody's emotions who could be hearing. I just want to uh, clarify that it took me many years to understand that nobody can actually take the worst or the best out of you. Uh, they can only trigger uh, anything. They can only trigger something in us and then it's our responsibility what comes up but for that we need to do a work of getting to know us so i'd like to ask you to take a piece of paper and if you can show it like um on a table or i can do it if it was okay can can and and write anything beautiful on that piece of paper anything i don't hear you you go you went mute um draw something beautiful whatever Whatever. like, like Okay, and now rip the paper off the uh, block. Great. Um, what? That's a piece of paper, right? Now you're gonna break the paper into pieces, a hundred pieces, or like many pieces, small pieces. And like connected to what you feel like with that sun being broken by you. Okay, and then if you can, you can, if you can, able so that so people see it. Can can you show it? No. Okay, so put it on your hands like this. Uh, you're mute again, by the way. And now blow it. Okay, 
So now tell me what. what it went all over the place. <laughs> it went on. The paper just like went all over the place. So, so what, what made go all over? What made the paper go all over the place? place. I blew it. You blew, you blew it. it. Right. Ah! right. Now, now take something like you have your phone next to you or something heavy, like something. Put it in your hand. Like that, the same, blow it. All your strength, blow it. What happens? Nothing, you're mute. What, what, why do, why you, do think you think paper, paper blue, 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 phone doesn't? doesn't. You're doing, you're the, doing the same. The you're doing, paper doing was it. lighter. So in reality, you triggered the phone and you triggered the paper. But what made, what made one blow and the other one not blow is what they're made of. Yes. It makes, it makes absolutely different. different. You did exactly the same thing, but the quality, their, their qualities of how they are built, what they are made of is what makes one blow. blow. Of course, of course. a hurricane, your phone will blow. But maybe a structure that it's made of materials to support a hurricane won't blow. So it's so is it that people really take the worst or the best out of us? Or is it on us? Wow, I love that. Absolutely. I get that. I get and, that. And, and so the, so the, next, the question um, before going to the what I learned about empathy or narcissism or um, I wanted to make this exercise so that everybody that's listening, I know I saw my friend Caroline and I saw John Bull um, could understand that my process for overcoming the difficulties was the first step was getting to know what I'm made of, what I was made of, what who, I, who not just who I was, but or who I am, but every day what I'm made of, so that when the trigger comes, I know if I'm gonna be able to withstand it, and if I know there will be a trigger, how can I prepare myself to withstand it, so, so that, that I'll defeated or victimized or like horrible after that. Because there are narcissists, there are uh, hurricanes, there are many things, right? So now, can you go back to the question? <laughs> um, I was asking about you identifying as an empath and what that means. So for, so for me, means, for me particularly, it means that I have a gift to connect with the uh, emotions or. Um, yeah, the emotions or situations that uh, ha are happening to people anywhere that I have the, the, the gift to see beyond the evident and um, whether it is my mind that works right and left at the same time, I'm very, 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 very fast and I can connect immediately with uh, spaces and, and like sort of like uh, planes that are one, two, three, four, five, six, like many levels and connect the dots and immediately like within seconds deliver um, uh, uh, an assessment, right? And I can feel like with people that I'm specially connected, I can feel when they're going through hardship. I can actually connect with the emotions of somebody else and feel their pain. And I can sometimes, a lot of times, foresee, I'm not a psychic, but I can foresee things um, that will happen and how will they happen and when will they happen. Um, and as I said, I am not a psychic. It's just, um, it's just a gift. It's really a gift. Sometimes it's a curse, but <laughs> most of the times I would say that uh, used um, purposely, it's a gift. Um, um, that's, that's for me. For me. It's not just sympathizing with somebody else's pain or somebody else's emotions. Um, it's going beyond that and feeling it from their perspective and understanding 
what they're seeing and why can't they see something else? Why can't they see either the solution or why can't they see um, a different way uh, than the, what they what they're just uh, limited to see? Yeah. No, I totally, uh, I totally understand that. In your opinion, how did you acquire empathy? How do you think that happened? Nature. I think that since I was very little, I, I was like that. I just didn't know that there was a word for it. So I always thought it was I'm like there was something wrong with me. Um, even though I was a popular girl at school and I was really like on, you know, like creative and I have still my closest besties and they really see me as someone like really special. I thought there was something really wrong with me. Um, I was told that it was wrong. What I felt it was wrong, what I thought it was wrong, like just that. So I was, I felt like I was defective in a way um when i embraced it in my elder years it came and i'll say this um it was a question that you were gonna ask me later what was my lowest point in my oldest older times and it came to a time where i really had no clue who i was i thought i was this the daughter of my father who he was a public figure and i thought i was i had to be this prototype of the latin jewish girl and i had to behave in certain ways so escaping to move to new york uh, against my parents will was the freedom so i could be whoever i wanted but i wasn't i was so far from the truth that was like it was another trap self-trap and then until one day um I woke up feeling I really, if I were that defective and I was so defeated and I had no idea whether I liked women or men or whether I like eggs, you know, boiled eggs or scrambled eggs or any eggs, um, I did not want to live. I did not want to live. And I remember that I asked to be put in the um, psychiatric ward because um, I had gone to a psychiatric after a breakup with this boyfriend that I, it was my trophy. I have to say nowadays, I know he, I used him as a trophy for me so that I could feel great about myself, that I could have such a good looking guy and, you know, um, and the, the psychiatrist was diagnosing me like without any testing, without anything. And so I was being medicated for so many things that I, and I didn't know, I didn't know who to ask. And. Um, I assumed that when, when I would ask him, but I'm feeling this, that, and the other, like secondhand, you know, like secondary effects, he would say, oh yeah, that's totally normal with people with your condition. And I was not only ashamed, but it was like horror. It was just a moment where I was ashamed, embarrassed, sad, defeated, and I didn't know what to do. So. Um, it was the first time I ever asked my mom for help to come to help me because un up until then I hated the idea that anybody would come to rescue me. Um, but I knew then that there was something wrong. But then there was something wrong with my mom coming too uh, because she actually believed the psychiatrist and she wanted to believe the story of a doctor. What would my crazy daughter know more than the doctor, right? I mean, she's always been like a little bit off. So uh, why would... <laughs> <laughs> you know I can't hear you, so, so you know you're mute for me. I, I yeah, no, no. I know. So, so I managed to the psychiatric ward, and I remember clearly that I discovered the empathy, or that I what it was an aham, aham moment, because um, there was always uh there. So we were called all the loonies were called out of the our rooms with the same rope, you know, all clean, whatever. And then I looked at the guy who was like standing two meters from me and I recognized him and I didn't, I couldn't tell exactly where I had seen him because he was wearing a ponytail and he was washed and he was clean, but I knew I had seen him somewhere. And then it hit me. He was a beggar. 
that laid on the floor, dirty, disgusting, stinky, crazy, scary, um, in the corner where I used to live. And I used to live in a beautiful block in New York City. So every time I walked by there and I, we, I saw him, even my dog would make a sound like, ooh. And when, when it, it was like, that was my moment. I said, okay, so here you are. You are like a Latin American Jewish princess and you're in the same shitty place than the beggar who has no apartment, no house, no food, no nothing, no money. The difference is that you have an insurance that's paying for you and uh, and he has to pay, like the government is paying for him. So everybody's like helping him. Well, you only have your parents who would rather have you here than outside, you know, making a worse name for themselves than, you know, before. Uh, so as long as I was in the loony, it was safe. And I have to say, I found such bliss being in there, um, connecting to the people there, observing. Wow. So that was my, that's when I knew that I had a gift. I didn't know it was called empathy. I didn't know what it was, but I really discovered, okay, uh, this, is, this is a gift. Like I have to find more people like the beggar. And, and myself that when I went out of that place, I would look into, like I would walk to every beggar on the streets. If I ran into one, I wasn't gonna go find them, but I would look at them in the eyes. I would come and if I gave them food or money or clothes or whatever, I would, even if they spit it on me, I would still look at them in the eyes and make them feel human, make them feel they deserve to be looked in the eyes and say something nice. And, and so that's what I did. And from there, I just continued developing that sense of um, empathy. Wow. When did you actually, so you, you felt it at that point, but when did you actually like learn the vocabulary word empathy? I think it was about then it was 20, I was 28. Um, uh, I was very lucky because I was dismissed with a letter of uh, for, uh, apologies for the misdiagnosis. Uh, it was quite funny because um, they they needed the bed to get me out of there, and the uh, the um, this is a side comment, but I remember like all the every morning they were coming in rounds for for anybody who knows how hospitals work, whether it's a psychiatric ward or any ward. You know, you have the residents, you have the uh, the 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 they're the ones who are doing their final step before they become, you know, the, uh, the specialty that they're looking for. And then you have the chiefs. And I remember that at every round, there were like 20 people like listening to the questions and they would just leave until one day they said, well, we're ready to dismiss you because uh, you don't require a bed. And so you can go to a center up north, you know, and do a rehab if you want. And so I said, what for? And he said, well, we have come to the conclusion that you have an, identi an identity disorder. I said, what does that mean? And he's, they said, well, you don't really know who you are. I said, well, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I, was, I thought I was somebody for many years of my life and it was based on what others told me what I was or what I was supposed to be. However, yeah, like this is why I wanted, I needed help, but proper help, not medication, not, you know, more um, craziness. So I remember there was the chief of the staff, the chief of the psychiatric ward, his um, pupil and then the resident. And he said, I said, he said, well, why don't you go back then to doing what you were doing before, which was the jewelry and accessories. I said, cause I don't know if that's what I want to do. And he said to me, well, what do you think Dr. Wapenny here his pupil, his, the, the, the one who was taking care of my case, does in the mornings that she doesn't feel like coming to work. I said, I have absolutely no idea what she does, but what I am really happy to know is that even Dr. Wapenny has days that she doesn't know what she wants, right? So they, they, Absolutely, yeah. So they laughed and he, he, he realized like, yeah, what a stupid, you know, diagnosis is that of a, 
identity disorder. Like we have days that we don't know what we want and we don't know where we are and we don't know how to get even what we don't know what we want. Um, and it's not a disorder. It's not, uh, you know, um, and it, 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 what I, what I, I think they realize is that empathy was needed in that moment. Rather than tell me what I had to do was helping me find out what I needed to do or what I wanted to do. Thank you, Charlotte. Yeah. So yeah, for anybody there that feels like, you know, it's so hard to like explain to other people, you know, I don't know what I want to do today. And I'm, it's, 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 it's taken me a, uh, it's taken a, a great toll on me particularly because I was so overachiever always. I was like a little, like a working ant, like the little ant that never stops. And um, somehow I also had a gift on <laughs> almost everything I it, like wanted to do. I did it great without any like uh, education. So if I wanted to cook, I learned to cook and I cook amazing. And if I wanted to do project management on constructions, I had I had a gift I could scan information really fast, really, really, really fast and get to deliver things and know how to connect the dots so that I could tear a wall without having to need the permits within a couple of days, having the people when I wanted, where I wanted. And that I want to also share with you, um, it's called learning the love language. So we talk about the toolbox and I, and I use a lot of uh, uh, the toolbox when I talk to my clients or to people and learning what you, what I showed you about the paper and the uh, phone, it's crucial so that you can actually connect to yourself and to others. So, because if you don't know what tools you have, then you don't know if you're really going to be able to hang the painting on the wall. You may say yes, but if you don't have the tools, then you're not. But if you know what you have and anybody throws you a task, then you can say, oh, I have the tools. Maybe I can do this. Absolutely. And then, and then, so, Absolutely. So I think that was the moment in which I felt um, the, I learned the word empathy.